About a couple of hundred years ago, a bunch of people who'd been thrown out of England washed up on a picturesque harbour in the middle of New Zealand and decided to build a town called Wellington. It was the perfect place to live, as it was surrounded by hills that none of them could be bothered walking over. And now Wellington is the second biggest urban area in the country. Everything in Wellington is a little kooky, and Wellingtonians have a tendency to tempt fate for fun. They made landing at the airport an extreme sport and decided the best way to cope with the major fault line running through the area was to put cute little houses all over the steep hills like happy dominoes. And because of the high risk of death by earthquake, the rest of the country thought Wellington would also be a good place to put the government. So in 1980, an architect called Basil Spence built them a building called the Beehive because it looks like a beehive, which is where all our politicians get drunk. Just down the road from the Beehive is another landmark building called Te Papa, and it's the National Museum of New Zealand. Te Papa is famous for both costing a lot of money and looking like it didn't. It's filled with the most wonderful and brilliant art, and often has tributes to all the New Zealanders that got shot by people from other countries. Paradoxically, lots of those people from other countries now live in Wellington, and everyone gets on like a house on fire, which makes you wonder what the fuss was all about in the first place. But it's the art scene that really sets Wellington apart from the rest of the country. There's a bohemian-style cafe or bar in every corner, literally buzzing with bohemians, buzzing about bohemia. And some of New Zealand's most famous exports have been exported from within the 10-mile radius around the Wellington CBD. 42 Below Vodka came from Wellington, but the government wouldn't give them any money to make vodka, so they left. Russell Crowe and Anna Paquin came from Wellington, but the government wouldn't give them any money to be actors, so they left. Flight of the Concords came from Wellington, no money, left, and of course Catherine Mansfield, who probably didn't even ask the government for money, since she was quite smart and knew they probably wouldn't say no anyway. In fact, when I think about it, Wellington is pretty evenly divided up between people doing really interesting things and government officials telling them not to do them. So the shopping here is quite good, as the interesting people need interesting things to buy, and the public servants need sensible shoes. Maybe this is one of the reasons why everyone calls Wellington the Melbourne of New Zealand, apart from the Wellingtonians who call it Wellie and refer to Melbourne as being the Wellington of Australia. But shopping aside, it's actually quite a pretty place. You can take the cable car up to Calvin and look out over God's creation, or tramp through the hillsides and look out at God's creation, or drive out to the beaches and look out at God's creation, or just wander around Oriental Bay and maybe jump off a fountain, which is actually illegal, but people do it anyway as the police aren't that fond of swimming and the harbour's really cold. All in all, it's a lovely little city, and you should probably pop over for a visit. Wellington, or as the Wellington City Council PR department call it, absolutely positively Wellington. No one knows what that actually means, but it sounds neat. <laughs> so, just like to thank everyone for uh, coming to the conference and for being here so early. And apologize for being late, but it is LCA. Welcome to LCA 2010 in Wellington. Um, we've <laughs> in Wellington, we take things to the extreme. And as you'll notice, Andrew and Suzanne aren't here, unfortunately. Um, they've come down with a tummy bug, and I'm just sort of stepping in at the last minute. So um, we wish them well if they're uh, looking at the stream at home. Everyone wave. Uh, we're, we're hopefully live streaming the entire event. Um, with a few hitches, hopefully uh, not, but we'll, we'll wait and see. So, um, this all started um, probably about a year and a half ago when Andrew and Suzanne uh, had been to previous LCAs, uh, loved it so much that they actually wanted to organize their own one and put a huge amount of work into the bid document. And fortunately enough, uh, our bid was accepted and sort of little did we realize that the actual work was only yet to begin. And over the last year, we've sort of been slaving away at LCA to bring you uh, this week. Um, and really, you know, a lot of this conference uh, couldn't be possible without Andrew and Suzanne. They've really put their entire lives on hold. They're, they've had a baby. They've shifted their uh, house. And uh, it's, been, it's been quite an ordeal. So um, if you see them around uh, later in the week, please go up to them and say thank you very much because without those guys, they uh, probably wouldn't have a conference. Oh. So about the extremes, well, we've actually taken so far to the extreme, we printed uh, mint tins as part of the delegate swag, but as probably most of you will have noticed by now, they're actually not in the bags, but we have a difference. Links. And that's the uh, celebration of the next Ubuntu release, Lucid Links. 
I would not use uh, this as uh, uh, air breath thingy. So, <laughs> warning. So, a couple of thank yous. Um, obviously, uh, Andrew's had a lot of sort of um, time off from his day job at Catalyst IT. Really like to thank them uh, a huge amount for letting them have the time to organize the conference. Um, a lot of the other uh, organizer volunteers also work at Catalyst. So, uh, the Catalyst founders, thank you very much for uh, sparing your employees' time. Um, it's very, very much appreciated. Um, already talked about Andrew's and Suzanne's family. They've, you know, um, been picking up the pieces over the last year, and uh, thank you very much. And also the, the cabal. Uh, and for anyone who doesn't know what the capital cabal is, basically we're the, the core organizers. That's what he called our team. Um, so we'd really like to thank them. And because, well, you know, it's my show, I'll thank me first. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'd, I was organizing the media and the speakers this year. Um, we had a really great uh, volunteer for the uh, papers committee. I'd like to thank each and individual paper committee for putting some time to review, um, I guess, what would have been over 500 uh, different abstract proposals. Um, LCA is definitely getting bigger and bigger each year, and unfortunately, we've got to cram sort of 80 talks into the main conference and as many as we can into the mini conf. So apologies for those who didn't get accepted this year. Please try again next year. Um, it's not because we don't love you. It's just because we've got a huge amount of abstracts to go through. Um, is anyone from the paper committee? People want to stand up and have a wave and give them applause? Except Rusty. <laughs> and... As it turns out, one of the paper committees has a very special day today. Rusty Russell, it's his birthday. <laughs> so let's, let's sing uh, Rusty, happy birthday. He's going to stand up as best he can because he's actually on crutches, but you can probably manage it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rusty. Happy birthday to you. Hey. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Andrew, your laptop's gone funny. <laughs> If you want. Hello. Hello. Can anyone help? That's kind of good. <laughs> <laughs> Has it crashed? No. Sorry about this. It's a laptop. I don't know. Fortunately, Andrew's giving a media interview at the moment, so that's why he's not on stage. Keith Packard is in the room, isn't he? <laughs> Uh, yeah. And it's not my laptop either. Down there. So no. It's like another screen down. Ah.
was working earlier. Even Mac won't fix it. I don't think it is. I think it's something that's wrong with the display. Oh. All right, I'll just talk. Um, so it's going through the Capital Cabal team. Uh, Heather Buchanan has been our graphic artist for the, the conference. So if you see all the, the swag uh, stuff, we've got a really nice looking penguin called Blue um, that we're using for the conference, so thanks to her. Francois has been uh, slaving away at the conference uh, software, Zookeeper, and has had very long nights uh, making sure things work and making sure the payment gateway was working and, and basically doing a lot of, of code there. So really thanks to him. Uh, Rob Coop is our AV man, um, who's been helping live stream this week with uh, Richard Naylor, uh, thanks to him. Uh, Brenda Wallace was involved until she got pregnant and uh, had a baby, but uh, she's been helping along the way with the various uh, funding programs. So we've got the Google Diversity Program, Internet NZ Oceana Program, and Internet NZ Kiwi Fellowship. Um, and that's brought uh, about 20 people to the conference who wouldn't have previously made it. So. Thanks to those guys for, uh, A, supporting the funding programs and for people applying as well. Uh, thank you to my lovely wife somewhere in the audience who also um, got pregnant during the event, so carrying on the tradition of LCA 2010. Um, unfortunately, uh, you can't see the slides, but it uh, shows a photo of how to deliver in a taxi cab, which we might be using this week because we're due in two weeks' time. Um, Andrew McMillan has been tirelessly looking after the sponsors this year. Um, and doing a great job. We've had really, really great support from all the corporate sponsors uh, and various partnerships. I'll go through them later on. But uh, thank you very much for doing that, Andrew. That's been really, really great. And finally, um, Andrew and Suzanne, who've really done an awesome job. Uh, so the Emperor's Penguin sponsors for this year have been Internet in New Zealand and Google and HP and IBM. So give a big hand for those. People really, really, really appreciate their support. Previously, we've only had two emperor penguins um, in, in past LCAs, so we thought, hmm, why not try four? So we have done that, and really, really appreciate the, the financial assistance because, again, without their support, we probably wouldn't have this conference. It's been a difficult year generally in terms of getting sponsorships from people, and those guys stepped up to the plate pretty early on, and uh, thanks very much to them. Um, in Royal Penguin, we've got Intel and Catalyst. Um, again, thanks for the support. Uh, Hohoi Yellow-Eyed Penguin sponsors Red Hat, Canonical, Aggressive, and Anchor. 
uh, Corora Little Blue sponsors uh, technology-wise, DreamHost, three months, I want my name, Ingres, Silver Stripe, Squiz, Amber DMS, and Remu Hosting. And we've also got a, like a whole bunch of supporting partners who have really added the sort of final finishing touches to the conference. Um, and really, really thanks to them. DPS Payment Express, CityLink, a uh, big round of applause to them. They're actually providing our entire bandwidth and all the sort of cafe net tokens that you get in the, the conference bags are all part of, of their sponsorship for the event. So that's massive. Thank you very, very, very much. We've had media partners like Slashdot and Linux Magazine. Um, really thanks to them. A uh, huge heap for, for advertising the conference. And we've had a, a couple of sort of ads and various websites around the place. And hopefully, you know, with 700 people registered for the conference, it's really made a big difference to people attending. Um, in the social events later on during the week, you'll see two partners uh, feature pretty well. Uh, Fiasco Wines and Epic, they're our alcohol sponsors. Uh, Epic Beer is a brewery up in Auckland. Uh, really encourage you to try some of the New Zealand craft beers, because I do and love them. And Fiasco Wines is, is great for the Penguin Dinner as well. So thanks to them. Um, also, thanks to Govis as well and Nice Gear and Scoop as, as also media partners as well. So um, just sort of going back a little bit in terms of the history, um, obviously LCA has been going a long time again, so we thought we'd do a little bit of you know, uh, audience participation and do the sort of regular thing of uh, basically anyone who went to CalU way back, can you stand please? And that's you Rusty too. <laughs> okay, how about uh, Sydney? 2001, for those people who weren't standing or have now, stand. Brisbane, 2002. Should be, oh, awesome. Uh, Perth, LCA, 2003. Wow, still a lot of people not standing. Adelaide in 2004. Uh, Canberra, 2005. Dunedin, 2006. Wow, there's still a lot of people haven't stand yet. Uh, Sydney, 2007. A few more, a few more. Uh, Melbourne in 2008. Hobart in 2009. Okay. So I want everyone to sit down, and those who are coming to LCA for the first time, stand up. Wow. That's awesome. So we've got a lot happening um, this week. As you'll probably see from the schedules, um, we've had a few bits and pieces, people speaking, drop the ad, and mini comps and stuff like that. What we're kind of trying to do is tell you the latest list of changes um, each morning just before the keynote as best we can. Um, but don't always follow what's on your badge um, because it might be a little bit wrong. Um, so we've got plenty of um, keynotes, tutorials, boss, hack fests, mini comps, talks, lightning talks and key signings. Um, really, you can go to the next one. Oh, yep. So these are the schedule changes for today alone. Um, we decided to change the, uh, the mini comps around quite at the last minute. So apologies to the people who um, this uh, put off. Unfortunately, we had a, a speaker lined up for the um, open public sector of Miniconf that we really, really, really wanted to have. Um, so we just switched uh, the business of open source to today, and we'll have the open and public sector tomorrow, uh, Tuesday. In the Libra Graphics Miniconf, we've got two changes that are different. Uh, Scribist by John Cruz is on now on at 11.55, and all the Libra Graphics tasks I said I would do are done at uh, 4.50. Yep, looks like. Uh, so hopefully Arjen is here. Can you come up to the stage, please? Um, Arjen's going to talk about Blue Hackers for a little bit. 
Awesome. Yeah. Microphone? Yeah. Good morning. I actually had my brain tuned to doing this on Wednesday. Because so. <laughs> you, yeah, in the past, uh, the... the Is it on? Yes, it is. I'll stick it in my mouth. That's fine. Okay, yes. Um, yeah, um, in the past, the opening things do go on Wednesday. So um, I'm not quite tuned in. Good morning. Um, yes, so November 2008, I did a little, um, a little gig on the stage at the closing... Um, yeah, well, the, uh, the closing... Um, lightning talks at, at OSDC, basically standing in front of the crowd and, and just asking who here has dealt with or is dealing with depression, bipolar disorder, and so on. Um, so we can do the same thing here, indeed. So now you look around you, now keep your hands up, 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 up. look around you, so now you know you're not alone. Um, so that's what we did at that particular crowd, and there was actually way more hands there. Um, I might have caught people by surprise. It's no longer a surprise. Um, since then, we've set up a website and created stickers. And the only thing you need to do with the sticker is stick it on your laptop. What does it do? It shows other people whether you have depression or dealt with it or not. Um, it shows other people that you have a bit of understanding for what they're going through. So it's kind of a silent show of support. You know, like those ribbon campaigns and so on. That's essentially all we visibly do. There's some information on the website, um, and there's an IC channel, and have a look there. It's bluehackers.org. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I do have some stickers here. I didn't get a chance to actually print a large stack of them. That will get done, so if you see me at other conferences, and I'll probably distribute them to lugs, um, you'll be able to get them. But there's, I don't know, I might still have 100 total left, so there should be sufficient to actually give each of you one if you, if you catch me around. Thanks. So LCA wouldn't be LCA without the social events. Um, we've got a couple of things on during the week. They're all in your badge. Um, we need to make sure that you keep your badge with you at all times to attend some of the social events, just because with security and stuff like that and letting you in. Um, if you look at your badges, you'll have different uh, icons and logos on them. Uh, the fish basically tells you it's the penguin dinner, if you've got a ticket for that. Uh, the, the speech bubble tells you that you're coming to the speaker's dinner and the number of tickets for that. Uh, if you're still keen to go to the penguin dinner, which is on Friday night, um, please let um, the registration know. Uh, we've got a limited number of tickets left, so we're basically going to sell out until we've reached capacity. So if you're interested in, in attending, it'll be $115. Um, yep, uh, Heather Buchanan and Allison is, are running the Partners Program this week um, and going, taking all the partners around Wellington and stuff, so hopefully they'll have a good time and the weather won't be too uh, unkind for them. We uh, included some sunscreen just in case, but I suspect we probably won't be needing that. But really, um, what we want to do is make sure that it's uh, really get your conference. It's what you make it to be. So we've organized a couple of sort of uh, informal events during the week. We've got yoga sessions for the first time at LCA, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning. Uh, there's limited places. I think it's 20 in total, and it'll be on a first-come, first-served basis. But they're free. You just need to bring yourself and probably some sort of stretchy clothes. Um, we've got Code Rush um, on Wednesday night, I think. Um, I think it'll be here um, for anyone who hasn't seen it. Um, it's about an hour, I think. Um, we've got an LCA uh, geocache for the first time, if uh, anyone's sort of involved in the uh, geocaching phenomenon. Uh, we've got a penguin-themed geocache. Um, there's a link on the website or the wiki. Um, hopefully, a lot of you will have uh, GPS phones, so go and find it and see what that's all about. Uh, photography competition uh, was just launched yesterday, and what we're really trying to do is encourage you to get around Wellington, different parts of Wellington. 
So in your delegate bag, there's a map, and the map is divided into four different quadrants, uh, Cuba, Courtney, uh, the waterfront, and Lambton, I think. And really trying to encourage people to take photographs and visit those sort of areas. There's an amazing range of coffee shops and restaurants and pubs and bars and stuff in different parts of the city, and it's, it's really, really cool. So um, have a look at the competition uh, rules on the back of the map, and uh, start submitting photographs. Um, and obviously tag all your photographs, LCA 2010. And over the course of the week, we'll sort of announce the finalists. We're going to stagger them over the week. So we're going to announce our first one at uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, so that's tomorrow. And, and really, if you see a need for something different, um, make one up. Um, we already had uh, a whole bunch of folks at, on Twitter um, organizing a, a tweet up. And that's happening tonight. Um, there's an RSVP as well, so if you're interested, uh, Mark Foster needs to know the rough numbers to give to uh, Green Man Pub. Um, it'll start at 6 p.m., um, but you really need to let them know um, really before 1 p.m. if you're interested in coming along to that. They'll have um, some food and some and beers over there. Uh, but really encourage you to, to, to make up some. We'll have um, a boff list and lightning talk list up at some stage uh, later on. I think most of the boffs are already decided. So there's probably a schedule out there. Um, lightning talks will happen on Friday morning um, as part of Nat's keynote. So um, we'll schedule those uh, later in the week. Yep, next slide. So while the slide's coming up. Um, we've got an official charity this year um, called Life Flight Trust, and the charity that's predominantly based in, in Wellington. So I'd just like to invite uh, Dave and Anna to come up to the uh, stage, and let's give us sort of a warm welcome, and, and they'll sort of introduce what we're kind of trying to do this week. Moving. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us here. Um, my name's Anna Gilhooley and I run the corporate and events at the Life Flight Trust. Uh, for those of you who might not be aware of what we do, uh, we are a charity operator and we have the Westpac Rescue Helicopter here for the Wellington region, but we also have a national air ambulance service. That's made up of two planes that basically connect uh, really ill people to where they need to go. Uh, we fly 1,500 people every year. Uh, we're there 24-7, uh, basically flying on average four missions every day. We are lucky enough to receive some government funding to the tune of about 60% of our costs. Uh, the remaining 40% works out at about 80000 a week, and that is purely from community contributions. So we are very grateful to have been chosen as a charity partner for LCA 2010. On my side here, I've got our crew chief, Dave Greenberg. Uh, he's going to shortly give you a bit of a talk about winching and show you a quick video on a winch rescue. The reason we're talking about all of this, keeping true to the theme of doing things extreme in Wellington, you guys as delegates here for this conference have got a really unique opportunity. We've got the board approval to operate a week-long pledge auction and at the end of that auction the prize will be for four people to take place on an exclusive winch training mission with our crew. You'll be dangling on an eight millimeter steel cable out the chopper. You'll get dangled down and up again. It's a really unique opportunity to see exactly what we do serving the community on a rescue mission this is an opportunity that literally money can't buy. So I really encourage you guys to get little groups together, make your bids, and you will be absolutely making a very real difference in the lives of 1,500 people a year. So in advance of that, thank you for your support. Uh, we will be getting an email out to you to explain how you can make those pledges. But in the meantime, if you do want to check more about LifeLight, just visit lifelight.org.nz. And now I'll just hand over to Dave. Thank you. you now, if any of you don't want to be there, you could just go for a helicopter ride. Um, I came to New Zealand 20 years ago this week, and believe it or not, I was a COBOL programmer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I offered up a Windows computer when they were having problems before, but they said that wasn't good. But... Um, I've had a real change of life, and I was a volunteer firefighter paramedic in the States, and now um, 
the ops manager, but more importantly, one of the rescue crew on the rescue helicopter. In just a second, I'll show you about a minute of the winching that uh, up to four of you could be winning. The thing about the winching, it's the ultimate team sport. If you have a cricket game and you get one guy who gets a 100, another who gets a penguin or, or a duck, um, then the team can still win. In winching, if our pilot gets a duck, then we all get a duck. Um, what basically is happening, pilot sitting in the front right-hand seat of the helicopter can't see what's going on down below. The crewman, like myself, is standing outside the helicopter. There's a guy on the end of the rope, which, um, or a woman, which you could become, and we call them the dope on the rope. And the reason they're the dope on the rope is because there's nothing you could do to save yourself. Um, it's really relying on the two people up front. I'll just show you a bit of winching if we could play that video. So there you go. Um, that's what you're bidding for this week. Or like I say, if you don't want to do that bit, you could just have a helicopter ride. Uh, it's not for everyone. We use the winch uh, about somewhere between 30 and 50 rescues a year. Uh, it could be in the bush. It could be out at sea. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's all about teamwork. And I know that the whole LCA, LCA conference is about teams, and you'll be breaking up into your teams. So really... Uh, recommend if you've got a little bit of, um, well, A, helping a really good charity, but B, if you've got a bit of adventure in you, this is, as Anna said, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, unless you choose to go and do some adventure sports in Wellington, and then I might see you at work. So um, <laughs> thank you very much, and thanks to the uh, organizers for supporting Life Flight, and have a really good week, and enjoy Wellington. Great. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Anna. So that is really the ultimate prize. So please give generously. I really appreciate the support. Um, we've got a number of other prizes that we're going to uh, give away during the week. Uh, stay tuned, but you've really got to attend the keynotes in the morning to win them, um, apart from one or two other things like the, the photo comp and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, nice and early starts. Please get in. Uh, as part of one of the prizes, which is to be decided, uh, is the uh, ray gun. Uh, Weta Digital have been very uh, generous and provided us a ray gun, uh, Dr. Grobort's uh, infallible Easter oscillator. So you can win this if you are at the keynotes, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, along with other prizes. So in terms of social networking, um, we're on Identica, we're on Twitter, we're on Freenode. Uh, I encourage you to use the, the back channel IRC uh, chats like you probably are doing right now and canning this entire welcome. That's all right. Uh, we've got a Flickr tag of LCA 2010, and that tag is going to be used for just about everything. Um, please blog the event. Please upload photos. Please sort of advertise and get the sort of general awareness so we can make uh, LCA bigger and better uh, next year. Uh, the network, um, the chat and hack is, is really just a sort of informal uh, areas around uh, the convention center that people sort of hang out. Um, Wellington Convention Center is the SSID for the wireless network. Um, all our bandwidth is sponsored, as, as said, by CityLink, but, you know, if you use, uh, abuse the network, we'll probably lose it. So please, please, please be careful about what you do on the network. Uh, 
the network is for all the delegates, and if one person uh, screws it up, it screws everyone up. So um, just a small, serious note there. Uh, the venue, on your badges, you have maps for all the venue. Hopefully, you shouldn't get too lost. Um, it's pretty easy. If you're confused by anything, let the registration desk know, and we'll try and help you as much as possible. Um, Wellington CBD, it's pretty central. You can walk basically everywhere, get down to the waterfront, get down to the areas of the photo comp, um, and really, you know, get around Wellington. It's, it's a great city. Next one. And finally, uh, just different tips, really. Um, this is really your conference. You, the conference. We can facilitate your conference, but really, this is your conference. You're part of a wider community of, of really great people, and these are your people. So please, please, please be nice to them. Please be nice to the volunteers. Uh, they're doing this all voluntary. Um, we really want to have a great week and try not to have anyone uh, make it a sour note. So enjoy the conference. We'll see you back here uh, on Tuesday for the, the morning keynote. And uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks very much. Oh, there's uh, afternoon tea now that starts. Oh, sorry, morning tea. <laughs> Holy crap. It's been a long morning. Uh, 10 a.m. till 10.30 uh, a.m. Morning tea will be free. Uh, lunch will start at 12.15 um, And that will be paid lunch. So there's plenty of coffee shops and restaurants around town. Uh, use them. There's actually a cafe place down in the Old Town Hall. Um, there's plenty there, sort of uh, coffees and sandwiches and stuff like that. And then we'll have another afternoon tea at 3.15 uh, p.m. So enjoy the mini confs. And... That's a good question. Where are the morning teas? Morning teas. Uh, in the promenade out here. Okay. In the promenade. Great.